name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate our visitors that's visiting with us today. May the Lord bless you. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord. We appreciate your presence. And to you out in the radio listening audience, I want to speak for the church and my entire family that we wish every one of you a very Merry Christmas coming up and a very prosperous New Year. And may God's blessings be upon you. Now, you in the radio listen audience, if you'll call a friend, have them to tune in and get the Northside Baptist Church Hour, you'll be doing them a real favor, and we'd appreciate that. Now, we have the singing and the music on cassette tape. We send these tape out for a gift of $3 each. A gift is used to help defray the radio expense. Just write in and say, Preacher Edward, send me the tape. This will be tape number 208. Tape number 208, the one today. We have a list. I have some 200 listed. I'd be glad to send you a list of 200 of our tape. We have more than that, but we'd be glad to send you a list of the 200. And we'd like to hear from you. We appreciate the beautiful Christmas cards that you've sent in to us. Now, if you'd like to request the calendar, we have the beautiful calendars. We'd like for you to have a calendar. You, some here in the auditorium that don't have the calendars, they're here at the front. I want you to come and get them and get them out. And you in the radio listening audience, if you'd like to have one of our beautiful calendars, write in and request it. We'll send it to you. You can request it in your letter or your Christmas card or call us or whatnot. Just write in and get a calendar. They're very beautiful. They have a beautiful cross and then the background of the world. They have different colors, gold, green, white, uh, purple, red. John 3, 16 is in red and then black. And, well, there's many different colors on this calendar. Be proud to have it there in your home or your office. So write in and get yours today. You here in the church can come down and take what you'd like to have in regard to the calendars. And we appreciate it. Now, my mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. You write to me. And pray for me, and I appreciate it. Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 2. I'm speaking today on the subject, Who Came to Bethlehem? Who Came to Bethlehem? Turn to Luke chapter 2. While you're turning there, I'd like to read a little something here that's so fitting at this particular time of the year, entitled The Incomparable Christ. He came from the bosom of the Father to the bosom of a woman. He put on humanity that we might put on divinity. He became the Son of Man that we might become the sons of God. He came from heaven where cold wind never blow, frost never chill the air, where no one is ever sick, where no one ever dies. He was born contrary to the laws of nature. He lived in poverty and was raised in obscurity. Only once did he cross the boundary of his homeland, and that in his childhood. He had neither training nor education. He had no wealth or influence. His relatives were uninfluential. In infancy, he startled a king. In boyhood, he puzzled the doctors. In manhood, he ruled the course of nature. He walked upon the billars and hurst the sea to sleep. He never wrote a book. Yet all the libraries of the country could never hold the books that have been written about him. He never wrote a song, yet he has been the theme of more songs than all the subjects combined. He never found a college, yet all the schools together cannot boast as many students as those who study his life. He never practiced medicine, yet he healed more broken bodies than all the doctors that's ever lived. Great men have come and gone, yet he lives on. Herod could not kill him, Satan could not seduce him, death could not destroy him, the grave could not hold him. He laid aside his purple robe for a peasant's gown. He was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor. How poor? Ask Mary. He slept in another's manger. Ask the wise men who brought the gifts. Ask his disciples. He crossed the lake in another's boat. He rode on another man's ice. He was buried in another man's tomb. 
All have imperfections, but he's none. He is the chiefest among 10,000. He's altogether lovely, and he is our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I hope that that's a blessing to you. As I read, it was a blessing to my heart, and I wanted to pass it on to you today. Now in Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. All went to be taxed, everyone in his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on the earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as angels were going away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child, all they that heard it wondered at those things which are told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorified and praising God for all the things <coughs> that they had heard and seen as they told unto them. <coughs> now that's reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20, page 1073 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. By the way, I still have a few Schofield reference Bibles. If you're concerned about one for Christmas, I can give you a good price on them. Not in the Bible selling business, but I'll collect a few in order to help those that might get them at a bargain if you're interested. Now we have this story here in Luke chapter 2. Now I want us to talk about who came to Bethlehem. Who came to Bethlehem that night? long ago when our Lord was born. There are several different groups came that night and I want us to find out who they were and why they came. Now at this particular time of the year we celebrate the birth of our dear Lord. It is true we know not the real day upon which he was born. We are not celebrating a day, we are celebrating the fact that he was born. And we want you to keep that in mind. And we're celebrating the fact that Jesus came down to this earth and he is called God's unspeakable gift. Now the greatest gift ever given was given from heaven, given by God the Father when he gave the Lord Jesus Christ God's unspeakable gift, the Bible tells us. I've been to Bethlehem many times. In fact, I've been there at least 12 times here in this stable where Christ was born. One of the oldest churches now standing in the world is built over that uh, a stable where he was born. And I've been there many times. I'll never go there without my heart being greatly touched as I enter that cave. That cave is kind of dark and smutty on the inside because of the candles that's been burning there uh, over the years. Millions of people have gone from all over the world to visit that cave and visit Bethlehem. This coming week, from all over the world, there'll be people, it'll be so crowded, there'll be so many people that you can hardly move for them 
because they come there from all over the world to visit Bethlehem at Christmas time. And so they'll be there. They're gathering over there now. No doubt they're crowded over there now, getting ready for the Christmas Eve services they will have there in the city of Bethlehem. All right, let's see. First of all, we find, number one, that the people came. The Bible said they were just ordinary folk who called Bethlehem their birthplace. Now, they knew where they were born. They knew where their county seat was supposed to be. And people came to their birthplace. Now, they didn't realize when they came to their birthplace for a special occasion that there would come one born there uh, that night that, of course, would change history. The greatest birth of all births that's ever happened in the world or ever will happen again. So just plain, ordinary people came in there they came in walking, they came in on camels, they came in riding on donkeys, they came from every direction. They came to Bethlehem. They did not know why they came except Rome had commanded them to register for the censors. Rome said, I want the people to assemble at uh, their county seat where they were born, where they were registered, and I want them to register for the censors. Now when Rome issued forth that decree, that meant they had to do it. They couldn't argue about it. They couldn't manage to excuse themselves out of it. They had to go. Rome was controlling Jerusalem at that particular time. And Rome was hard-boiled. And they uh, controlled it with rigor. And they said, now I want you to go. And there, of course, I want you to check on the rest of your senses there in Bethlehem. You that, that were born in that area and registered there, I want you to go. And all over the known country, they went to their county seats. They had no idea what great event was going to take place there. They talked, they laughed, no doubt, and some fuss and quarrel because of having to go and check up and register for their senses. They didn't like that. They had no idea whatsoever that something most unusual, one of the greatest events in the history of the world, would happen there in Bethlehem. To many today are running to and fro, but they have no idea what Christmas means. You'd be surprised today how few people are riding and going to and fro and buying and giving and getting ready for Christmas. They have no idea what Christmas is all about. In a store some time ago, there was some ladies shopping, and one lady mentioned something about Jesus and the things of the Lord. And one of these aristocratic sisters turned and looked and said, hmm, Said there's some people trying to put a, a religion in Christ in Christmas. And so she didn't even know what it was all about. Uh, I wonder why she thought she was in there trying to shop and buy gifts and didn't know what it was all about. Beloved, when people take Christ out of Christmas, then there's not anything left really pertaining to God. We need to know that. And we have many today running to and fro, but have no idea the real meaning of Christmas. Number two, not only did the people come, but the Romans came. They came to raise money. Every person born in Bethlehem had to register and pay his tax to Rome. And so the Romans came in. You know, Matthew was a Roman tax collector when God saved him. That was his job, his responsibility to collect taxes for Rome. And so the time had come that the tax collectors had to get their desks all set and ready and make plans to gather money for Rome. They looked forward to this. And people had to come and register. And, and there they had to pay their taxes there in Bethlehem. Those that came there where they were born, of course. But they had Roman tax collectors all over the land of Israel. All over Judea. And they had to come and pay their taxes. And they hated those tax collectors. Many times tax collectors in those days... If a man owed, uh, uh, say, $10 tax, and then if he could uh, collect $15 out of him, then he would be able to keep five. And for that reason, they hated those tax collectors. They tried to chisel out of every man that could all the tax they could get. That kind of sounds like uh, our day and time, doesn't it? People pay so much taxes in every direction. Everywhere you go is tax this and tax that and and you got to pay your taxes. Somebody said death and taxes are the only two sure things in the world today. And you pay tax today every way you turn. You're paying tax on something. And so those tax collectors, they were ready. 
They said, all right, you got to pay your taxes. Now the Romans came. And so today, many Christians, it's just a money-making season for them this time of the year. Did you know the merchants that uh, sell their Christmas uh, uh, products and so forth? Uh, they say that half their annual income comes in at Christmas and the other half during the remainder part of the year. So you can see why the merchants, and I'm not fussing on them, they're in there for business and they're planning and scheming to make all the money they can. Because half of their annual income comes at Christmas time. The other half will come the other uh, 11 and a half months in the year, 11 months in the year. But they got to have a good Christmas. They must set up everything to sell. And, and of course, many of them, maybe a few that don't do this, but many of them, they get together and they say the price of this item is $25. That's the price. I'm going to set it up to $35 and then I'm going to put it back on sale for $25. And they start hanging their sale signs on there. And that's exactly what they sold it for before they put the sale sign on there. They just jumped the price, then reduced it back down to what they would set it for otherwise. They do that many, many times. And you think you're buying something on sale when really you're buying it at the original price. Now there's some that do go on sale. Now, if you can buy something and catch it on sale and you're wise enough to know it's on sale, well and good. But a lot of dear people are not wise enough to know whether it's on sale or not. They walk through the store, that's for sale, for sale, 10% off, 15% off, and on and on. And they think they're getting something on sale when they really pay the original price as a general rule. They just set the price up so they could reduce it and call it on sale. Now, beloved, not all of them do that, but many of them do. So if you're looking for something on sale, you need to really check into it and find out whether or not you're really getting something on sale, yes or no. That's up to you to do that, but a lot of people never think about it. They just read the little card, on sale, 20% off, uh, 50% off, and uh, they don't check to find out what the original price used to be or what it will be later on. And uh, what it's been reduced from, they grab it. They said, man, I got a deal here. It said uh, 40% off, and I bought it. Well, you could have bought it for the same price back yet a month ago if you wanted to. Now, listen to me, beloved. At Christmas time, people are concerned about making money, and that's it. Some of them, they're not glorifying God. And so the people came, and the Romans came. Number three, religion came to Bethlehem at that time. The Jewish religious leaders uh, came, and you can rest assured, they took the advantage to push their religion upon others. Always when Jews assembled from all over the world, the known world at that time, those rabbis and priests, religious leaders would come to try to palm their religion off on other people because they were assembling there. Now when Paul got saved, he had heard to the marketplaces because people gathered there, and he'd go there and preach to them. Now, these religious people came to make big to do at this particular time of the year, uh, trying to sell people on their religion. And so people get very religious around Christmas time, but know nothing about God, many of them. You see a lot of things taking place around Christmas time that looks religious. You see a lot of people in church at Christmas and on Easter, and you'll never see them again until next Christmas and next Easter. They get religious around Christmas time. And so they were very, very religious. Right up here at Gateway, there's a little place up there where there's a, a Mooney up there that sells flowers. Sometimes a beautiful little girl, maybe a Korean girl, sometimes a man, standing in that real cold weather, selling those flowers for Sun Yun Moon, that old false prophet. He gets some money. They don't get it. They may tell you they're fighting communism, but they're out there selling flowers for Sun Yun Moon. And they're standing there in the cold, they're very religious, but lost, know nothing about God on the road to hell, and they'll follow sun, young moon to the flames of burning hell. Just like these Russellites, they don't believe in Christmas, of course, but they get out and stand in the cold weather and give out their literature and uh, fall into hell they don't believe in and lead multitudes in thereafter them. It's terrible when people get religious. Number four, not only did religion come, and religion is not worth a snap of your finger without Jesus Christ, without God, without the Spirit of God, but you have a lot of religion around Christmas time. And then number four, the soldiers came. 
It was not on that night, but later they came to kill all the babies, two years old and under. Now when old Herod found out Jesus was born, and they said, Herod, there's a child born over there in Bethlehem, and they say he's born king of the Jews. Herod said, you mean to tell me there's some child over there that's expected to be king? I'm king around here. They said, well, they say he's born king of the Jews. They're making a big to-do about it over there. Herod said, let me look into that. And uh, he sent the wise men over there when they came to Jerusalem and said, you go and check out this baby and find out what it's all about. They say he's born king of the Jews and you come back and tell me, I want to go over there and worship him. He was a liar. He didn't want to go over and worship him. He had other things in mind. Now when the wise men left and did not go back and report to King Herod, but went back another way, man, that made him mad. And he called his soldiers in. He said, get your swords ready. I want you to visit Jerusalem, or rather Bethlehem. I want you to pay a visit to Bethlehem. I want you to go over there. I want you to kill every baby over there, two years old and younger. There's one over there born king of the Jews, and I want to be sure you get him. Don't take any chances. Don't you leave a baby alive in Bethlehem, two years old or younger. They said, yes, sir. We'll see to that. But before the soldiers got there, God spoke to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, you and Mary and Jesus better get on the move and get out of here. They're coming in here to kill all the babies and take him and go down into Egypt. Mary, Joseph, and Jesus went down into Egypt about 200 miles or 250 miles on down into Egypt. And they said, go to remain there until I give you, give you orders to leave. And they went down into Egypt. I have visited that place where they stayed in Egypt. They went down into Egypt and then the soldiers came in and they killed every child two years old and under in Bethlehem. But they didn't kill Jesus. He is on the way to Egypt. See, God worked that out. And so the soldiers came. Now, when they went down into Egypt, they stayed a period of time. And God told them then, he said, all right, you can get the baby now and go back to Bethlehem and go back to Nazareth. Old King Herod is dead. Don't worry about him. God killed him. And so they took Jesus, they went back to uh, Bethlehem and on back to Nazareth where Jesus grew up. So the soldiers came, they did that dirty work. The Old Testament said Rachel will be weeping for her children. And that was fulfilled at that particular time. The fifth group that came to Bethlehem was the shepherds. The shepherds came, they were very humble people. Shepherds were bold to enter the city from nearby. Finds because of a, a wonderful angel, a message that came to them that night. Now they were a humble people. I've been out in the shepherd's field where they were that night. I preached out there where they were that night. And, and uh, in a beautiful shepherd's field down near uh, uh, Bethlehem. And they were out there at night, a very humble group of men. Watching over their shepherds by night. And all of a sudden, the angels told them what had happened. And, and they took off and went to Bethlehem. Now, they were kind of a timid type people, a country type people. They were shepherds. They didn't usually go running into a little village like this without a reason, but they got in a big hurry, and those shepherds came to Bethlehem. Those shepherds came, and they saw Jesus in the manger. They saw Mary and Joseph in the stable. They saw the Christ child. They saw God in the flesh. That was Jesus born of a virgin. And his name was called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. That was God that came and was born of the virgin and they are placed in that manger. And those shepherds saw that and they praised God and they shouted the victory. They were happy. They glorified God because they had seen the Messiah that God said would come all the way through the Old Testament. First in uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. And Jesus came born in due time born of a woman and God said Mary would be blessed among women not above women but among women now you keep that in mind she was not blessed above women but among women Mary was a fine God-fearing young maiden virgin girl just like any other girl and God chose her to put the Savior in the world now the Roman Catholics today they make a lot to do over Mary and many of them worship Mary, and that's bad, and worship idols, and try to exalt her above others. But the Bible says she was blessed among women, women and not uh, over women, or not above women. 
And so you must keep that in mind. You have religions today that worship idols and worship Mary and worship prophets and worship various other religious things. But the only one to be worshipped today is Jesus Christ, our dear Savior. And the shepherds came and they found him. There born of a virgin, placed in a manger, there in a cow stable. That's where God was born. All the way from heaven he came. He owned the worlds. He created the worlds. And he left the wealth of heaven. He came down and born in a cow stable and placed in a manger. He didn't even have a crib. No place to lay his head. Put him in a manger. And that's why Jesus Christ was born. He that was poor, he knew no sin, was made sin for us. And through his poverty we are made rich according to the Bible. So the shepherds came, a very humble group of men. Number six, the wise men came later. Not on that same night, but sometime later they came and they brought gifts. The Bible doesn't say there were three wise men. The reason people assume that is because they brought three different kind of gifts. Could have been more than three. And they just brought three different kind of gifts. Could only have been three. The Bible said they brought gold. They brought frankincense. They brought mirth. Now gold speaks of the deity of Christ. Frankincense speaks of his humanity. And mirth speaks of his death. And so they brought these three gifts, speaking of his deity, his humanity, and his death. And they brought them and placed them there before Jesus. He was in a house at this time. They'd taken him out of the stable, put him in a house. And these wise men came and worshipped him. They came from the east, no doubt from Saudi Arabia, in that particular area. They came in and brought these gifts. And then they went back on their way. They saw the star all the way from Saudi Arabia or Iraq in that direction. And they followed it 500 miles across there. And they came over and brought their gifts and placed them at the feet of Jesus. Now Jesus was the first Christmas gift ever given. These others are second. Uh, God's gift came first. Uh, the Bible speaks of the unspeakable gift. That was God's gift there in the manger. God gave his Christmas gift first. And then the wise men brought theirs. Number seven, the angels came. They came to glorify God and exalt his name. My high angels were thrilled and stirred up whenever Jesus was born. They had been looking forward to that and they were greatly thrilled and they were stirred up whenever he was born. Number eight, God came. You may say, preacher, what do you mean God came? Well, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall send you, give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That word Emmanuel means God with us. So you see, God came to Bethlehem that night. Came in the form of a baby. He was very God and very child. And he came born that night. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel which has been interpreted is God with us. That's Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. So God came to Bethlehem that night. And I'm glad that he did. That's been about 2,000 years ago. God came down this earth. That was God's greatest gift. Many years ago, I read this story. I read it again the other day. I've told it, but it's so fitting. I'd like to pass it on. It illustrates a good point at this particular time of the year. There was a warden one night that... Uh, left his prison. It was on uh, Christmas Eve, and this is, a, this is a true story that happened in uh, the state prison in Michigan. And this warden had been there just about all Christmas Eve night. He's getting close to day is yet dark. He had a little girl at ho home, and he wanted to take her some toys, and, and he was kind of weary, and he's glad to get away that morning. And so the warden left kind of in a hurry and started home. And when he got on the outside of the prison, he noticed something moving there nearby, and he looked closer, and it was, he saw a little girl standing there. She had on a thin dress, and shoes too big for to wear, and no coat on. It was awful cold, and he looked at her and said, uh, uh, who are you? She said, sir, are you the warden? He said, yes, I'm the warden here, but what are you doing here? Uh, she said, uh, my papa is in a prison there, and her daddy had uh, committed murder. He was real weak yet and mad, and... And he was in prison. And she said, I wanted to bring him a little Christmas gift. Said, my mama died in the poorhouse, sir, uh, uh, two weeks ago. And then little Jimmy died, my only little brother. And I'm the only one left. And 
I want to come and see my papa. If you'll let me in, please. I appreciate it. He said, no, no, little girl. I said, you can't get in there. I said, you can only go in at visiting hours. And I'm in a hurry to get home. And you just have to go on your way. And he started to walk off. And then he heard little footsteps behind him. He stopped. There she stood, tears running down her little face. And she said, Mr. Warden, he said, if, if you were in prison there and, and you had a little girl and, and her mama was dead and her little brother's dead and, and she wanted to get in to see you, sir, Mr. Warden, would you not let her in? And he began to cry. He said, well, little girl, I'll take you in. But he said, come follow me. So he took the little girl on the inside of the warden and inside the prison and told her to sit down. And he called for number 37. Number 37 was a wicked man. He was hardened in sin. And you could see it on his face. And husky fell. And he came out. And when he saw that little girl, his little daughter, a frown came over his face. And, and with a snarl, he said, uh, Nelly, what are you doing in here? She began to cry. She said, Papa, I wanted to see you on this Christmas. I brought you a little Christmas gift. He said, you have got no business in here. She said, Papa... I, I want to tell you something, said, uh, said Mama died in the poor house uh, not too long ago. And said, uh, Papa said, uh, I hate to tell you, but said, little Jimmy died, and you love little Jimmy. And said, he died, Papa. The man stood there froze. He could hardly believe what he heard. And she said, not only that, Papa, but said, I have here in this little uh, uh, piece of paper a little Christmas present for you. Said, I want you to take it. And she unwrapped it, and there was a little... Gold, a little curl of a little golden hair. She said, Papa, I cut that in little Jimmy's head before they put him in the grave, and I wanted to bring it to you. That comes from little Jimmy's head. You loved him so much, Papa. And said, I want you to have it. And that man took that little curly piece of hair from his little boy's head. He stood there, his big frame shook, and tears rolled down his face, and they cried. And that warden said, I just couldn't stand it. He said, I asked him to excuse me, and he said, I went out, and I was gone for an hour. And said, when I came back, said she was sitting in her daddy's lap and they had cried and cried and there they were so shaken and he had his arms around her. And he said, uh, number 37 said to the warden, he said, uh, sir, said, don't let my little girl go out with this little thin dress on. Said, take my coat. So I'll get up early, I'll work late, I'll do anything to pay for this coat. Said, would you take my coat and put it around her? The warden said, no, I won't take your coat, but I'll see that she gets home warm. Not only that, I'll take her to my house and see if I can't help her. Oh, he said, sir, I appreciate that so much. And there he kissed her goodbye. The old man had wept and his body shaking with sobs. He went back to his cell. This warden took this little girl to his home, gave her Christmas and kept her in his home. And she became a devoted Christian. And later she won her daddy to God. And the preacher that told the story, it's a true story, went back years later. And the warden said, preacher, you remember the story that I told you? He said, yes. He said, would you like to take a little visit with me? He said, I would. He said, come, let's go down the street away. They went down the street away from the penitentiary, knocked on the door, and a very beautiful young girl came to the door with a big smile on her face, Christian attitude, and said, gentlemen, how do you do? And and he said, uh, the preacher said, this is Nellie. That's the little girl I was telling you about. An old man, bent with years, got up and started walking the door. He said, uh, preacher said, that's her daddy. Said he got saved and he abided by the laws and he reformed, began to live for God. And we didn't want him to die in the penitentiary and he's old. And said, we let him come out and gave him a pardon. And said, he and his daughter Nellie now lives together. And said, they are so happy and they love God and they put Jesus first in their lives and says, it's wonderful what God can do for people like that. So that was a wonderful Christmas present. Little Nellie brought her daddy to prison that day, a little curl from a little brother's head, and brought it to her daddy that night that meant his salvation, that he wouldn't die and go to hell and later get out of prison. Thank God for the Christmas story. Let's stand to our feet. Our Father, I pray today that you'll take the message and use it. Thank you, God, for what Christmas means to your people. Lord, we celebrate the fact that Jesus was born, and he came as a gift, and he came filled with love. And your people, Father, at this time of the year, should love him more and more 
And as gifts are given, we should do it through Christian love because we love him and love each other. Had your way in this invitation, our Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. David's going to play on the instrument while she's playing. If you're here and unsaved, backslidden on God, you want to join this church, you want to come forward for any reason, you may come as she plays. Would you do it? No greater time could you do business with God than at this particular time of the year, Christmas season. Many things happening. our church home are you out of fellowship and like to come back to God young man came to my study the other day and I have led him back into fellowship with God the devil had broken up his home and he was in terrible shape 